All right, everybody. Operation Halcon or Halcon, which actually means Operation Hawk. This is the actual investigation in between, pardon if my pronunciation is wrong, Nundragana from Italy with the Sinaloa cartel. Now, this is a big power move, right? These are talking about multi-billion dollar moves, right? This isn't a small side deal. Nandragana, they control a large part of the cocaine coming into Italy and other parts of Europe, not just Italy, even though that's the base of their their power, right? Now, this actual breakdown of what actually went down as well, you could look at what happened in Spain, where the Sinaloa cartel also lost a cell that went down there. Now, this actual Operation Halcón was headed by the Italian police, it's pointed to point out, and we're actually watching the Sinaloa cartel bring in tons at the end of the day of cocaine into Italy that was considered at the time one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, in my opinion, in most people's opinion, was El Chapo as far as the actual one bringing the one in, in specific with them in the Dragana. And actually in his trial, you know, this came out in specific. And actually the American authorities at the end of the day were actually looking at in specific, you know, a lot of what his participation was with the Dragana. It came up a lot more than one time. Now, even though at the end of the day the Sinaloa cartel and the Italian authorities, you know, watching them didn't stop, you know, with Chapo. That didn't stop. And their participation isn't going to stop, right? These people have, there's too much of a chance for money to be made between these organizations. They're not just going to throw in the towel and just. Chapo's sons are taking his role, right? And they know as well how much money can be made. The price of these narcotics has only gone up. It doesn't. It, this is this isn't something where they know they'll get in this business and they're gonna run out of clients or the business is gonna run dry. That's never gonna happen. The business of this, as long as these substances are legal, they have money to be made and lots of money, right? It's a sure investment, and Europe's ripe because of the price as far as what it can be sold at. On top of the fact they can cut it a lot more than what would be accepted, let's say in the United States or anywhere else where it'd be considered complete garbage, what be sold in London or other places like that is considered the norm. And the cartels know that. A lot of times they themselves end up selling it uh, directly to the people. It's not just them trafficking it. It's very worth pointing that out as well. In lots of cases, let's say look at the United Kingdom, other places, they themselves end up distributing the drugs. It's not just, and when I say distributing them, I mean on the local level, not on just to, to the dealers, right? They end up sell, setting up their own sales and selling it and doing their own thing and actually bringing it directly to the dealers on top of supplying local gangs, things like that, of course, to work for them. Now, with what went on with Italia, uh, Italia, excuse me, um, this was going on in the Southern Peninsula, all right? So you guys can actually get a picture of where uh, Catania in specific, actual city on the west of Sicilia, and this is where the, you know the mafia comes from. This is a very strong place for the for for the mafia's presence, and there's also an international airport. These are all important factors into the story and will play a part into this alliance and Operation Hawk. Now. Thanks to what actually came down with the Grupo de Investigación de Crimen Organizado, or basically the, it's the anti-mafia group, and the group that goes after them, usually financially, um, in Catania. It was three, work of, three months of work for Pablo Lecese, who identified you know, the principal figures of the Sinaloa cartel in Italy, um, they were known at the time as Los Guatemaltecos. They went by the name Luis Fernando Morales Hernandez, known as El Suegro, Daniel Tito Estaven, 
Ortega Uvera, as well as Felix Ruben Villagran Lopez. Uh, after being identified, you know, as the principal and heads of the Sinaloa cartel's presence in the country as a whole, um, their importance, of course, you know, boom, it was the end of the day. Lights out for them because in Italy, the Santa Mafia group is known for going after people with no gloves. Now, the actual airport in Catania, Fonte Rosa, was where Don Senor actual came, the planes came in from Colombia in specific, and informants, you know, put in the Sinaloa cartel in the cell that. At the area, Jose Angel Rivera Suasueta, also known as a Flaco, from Culiacan, and one of actually Miles' principal lieutenants, was the leader of the Sinaloa cartel in Italy. And they just found that out at the end. That was kind of a little surprise to them. Now, Flaco was actually putting together this huge meeting with Don Senor who was going to connect this whole thing with the Dragon and the Sinaloa cartel and what was coming from Colombia, distribution of tons and tons of cocaine and buyers that were going to be sent to. Now, Rivera Tazueta came into Catania in June of 2019 and registered into one of the most luxurious hotels there, uh, the Roman Palace or Palacio Romano actually put on the shores of the ocean beautiful view and the next day right they sat down and talked business now for off the bat you know as a first little shipment or first taste it was supposed to be 385 kilos that were going to be brought in by by plane that would arrive from mexico in the cartagena where you know, this would be brought at the end of the day to Cabo Verde. And this is in Africa, the most western point for them, right? Where they get fuel and bring it into Catania. Now, there they'd be received by Don Senor, who take these uh, narcotics by vehicle, uh, avoiding customs and bringing them up north. Now, in Italy, the actual drug was to be sold by the Dragana. That's who was actually doing the sale, which is important. It wasn't like in other places where I was previously stating the Sinaloa cartel took play and were to sell it themselves. It was clearly to be stated and specified that they were not to be sold by the, the Mexican cartels in Italy. It was to be the Dragana. And they are a member you know, based organization of about 30,000 strong that aren't to be played with, they're known to use violence and they weren't, you know, they're not like a group that's going to be overpowered by anyone either, especially in Italy. Now, they go back um, a long time and in 2013, I guess there was a big loss for them um, around 53 something like that, or $5.3 billion worth in, in euros, something like that. More than what McDonald's and Douche Bank are worth together. That's what they were, you know, said to be worth. So let's put that, you know, into perspective how much they're actually worth, you guys. Um, 53 billion euros. That's more than, like I said, McDonald's and Douche Bank together. And they control 80% of the cocaine trade in Europe which is another way to state as far as their importance or their actual level of income. Think about that. 80% of all the cocaine that comes into Europe is controlled by this one group, by the Andragona. So no one thinks I'm um, overstepping or exaggerating how strong these people are and what their actual role in the cocaine trade. They are the top dog on the global market as far as Europe goes the only market are the only people in that market in lots of places think about it. they hold down 80% they only 20% for everyone else 
So I'm sure they are the they have the monopoly in plenty of places where they're present there. Now they are right now as far as the Italian mafia on an international level the strongest and the most dangerous considered uh, in the world and that's widely agreed on I think as far as people who look into organized crime. Now the people actually coordinate in Italy constantly on the Sinaloa cartel, you know, infiltrating cells. That's not going to stop. They're not going to stop and just let the Sinaloa cartel make these huge deals with organized crime, though, because they know that's the base of power for a lot of these groups. The money they can make off drugs as they control 80% of the market for all of Europe. Look at the hit they took. You know, we're talking about how much money these people are worth. It's insane. Uh, what they're said to be worth is nuts. Now, on the 16th of Ortega in Via Gran, on the 16th of January, actual flew into Verona to hold down a meeting with Salvador Asenio Chavez, also known as the architect. Now, this is someone who was born in Jalisco and was a very important member at the time to hold down this deal and make negotiations with Don Senor and take him actually the load, if you want to look at it like that. Now, the financial police in Italy I'd previously mentioned were watching both groups and what was going down. And with their system of informants, you know, they were able to watch what was going down pretty much in real time on every step of the way. Now, as far as in Verona, you know, these people were accused of drug trafficking and distribution, especially, you know, on the international scale. And this group, you know, the Sinaloa cartel, and their intentions of bringing in 385 kilos, you know, shows they're not going to stop. You know, this is just, you know, something that was a little taste of what they got. If you guys want to think about what actually comes in the country, as they're ex <laughs> they are supplying 80% of the cocaine coming into Europe, what's 385 kilos? You know, this, but what's important is the role that's being played in between these two groups. And this is actual proof of that role. And just one deal being made between these groups. Think about that, though. If they're doing 80% of the cocaine, how many pe How big is that market? And how big is the actual market the government knows of? You know, what they actually think of is always just a small fraction of what in reality is going on. And they always try to play that numbers game and say it's a lot lower than what it is. But either way, you know, these people being worth more than McDonald's and Disha Bank together says uh, <laughs> they aren't going anywhere for a very long time. They probably have a more money coming in than lots of small countries, right? Now, please do not forget to smash on that like button. Leave a comment down below. That's what keeps us out there at the end of the day. It gets people seeing this. And I appreciate it, everybody. I really do. It's uh, more than I can ask you. And it doesn't cost you anything. It's a couple seconds of your time. I really do appreciate it. Now, if there's something I can do for you, like encourage you on getting out of organized crime if you are in it, or give you any type of positive encouragement in any way as stepping away from that life. Or if you want to share information with me, you can contact me at OG Shadow Official Podcast at gmail.com and I'll get back to you as a time and manner as I can. I do get lots of people to contact me, but we'll be in touch, my friends. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to actually care and listen to what I have to say here. So thank you for being a part of this and subscribe if you haven't already so you can hear about it in the future as well. Click on that notifications bell. I never remember saying any of that, but I did today. As well, consider becoming a member. You can see videos like this before anyone else does ahead of time. Adios amigos. Salve hasta la próxima.